I'm getting ready to update my downstairs bathroom and as you can see it's going to require a little bit of wallpaper removal. Now today when I do that I thought it would be a great time to show you why sometimes the simplest techniques are the best techniques. I have used wallpaper removal chemicals and tools and steamers and it came back down to just the simple method. You can save a lot of money and actually save quite a bit of time as well as your lungs. So before you run out and buy the next greatest thing to help you remove all that wallpaper, give this a try first and see if it works for you. Here's what you'll need to get started. You'll need a taping knife, either of a steel taping knife or plastic will do. Um, and you'll just need some warm water inside of a squirt bottle. And if you don't have nails, you might also want to consider having an X-Acto knife or something just to help you get started by picking little pieces of the, um, of the wallpaper so that you can get your fingers under them. Now, first things first, there are two questions you're going to ask yourself before you get started. One is, what kind of wallpaper do I have? If it has kind of a glossy feel, that plasticky feel on the top, then that's going to be ideal for this method of wallpaper removal. Um, if it is an older wallpaper, you might want to consider uh, double checking underneath to see if there are other layers of wallpaper underneath as well. Because if you're dealing with multiple layers of wallpaper, well, let's just say it can get a little bit hairy and you might end up pulling some of the drywall off as you peel or remove your wallpaper. And that will happen no matter what method um, that you use for wallpaper removal. So be very careful when you're doing this. Sometimes it's just not worth it. Since at my last house, there was areas in there that had three to five layers of wallpaper, I really should have just considered, as much as I hate to say it, papering over some of those areas because my mudding wasn't very good and I ended up having to replace areas where there were patches in the drywall. So if your um, wallpaper is newer like this um, and it has that kind of finish on top that's kind of almost a plasticky feel, especially as you peel it back, then you'll know that this is the ideal kind of wallpaper uh, to remove. Now to get started, all we're really going to do is start by removing the, that top plasticky kind of layer. So go ahead and give that a go. Um, so you can get your fingers under there and as big pieces as you can get them. you're going to want to take off that top layer. Kids love doing this. It's the real reason why I have to remove the wallpaper in this room anyway. Just because they've already started the process, picking at the little seams. Now once you get um, the majority of the wallpaper off in that area, you're going to take your water bottle with your warm water um, and you're just going to spray across the area that is exposed underneath that paper material that's left behind and really make sure you spray good. Get all of the um, exposed areas, get it nice and soaked so it'll loosen up that glue underneath. Now I'm working in an area here that has an outlet. Be very careful in these areas. You don't want to spray over that. Um, one thing that you can do is go ahead and cover the area with a plastic, a little bit of plastic, just tape it off so that you're not spraying water into it. But for now I'm going to work around it and I'll take that off after the fact. I've got this area where the outlet is taped off and I've sprayed this entire wall from the ceiling all the way to the very bottom. And I've gotten off most of the wallpaper. There's a couple pieces that were a little more stubborn, especially at the edges where there are seams where typically the glue would have been placed on a lot better. But um, for the most part, it's pretty, it's pretty moist everywhere. Um, and it's absorbed. I can tell that the wallpaper has absorbed some of that water. So now I'm going to go ahead and start peeling it. Now what I would typically do is start from the very top. Um, but just for the sake of showing you, I'm going to start here at the middle. If you start at the top and you're able to peel back a little bit of wallpaper, the nice thing is that you can just start to pull the whole thing all the way down and take off entire sheets at a time. 
In this case, since again I'm not starting from there, I'm just going to show you from the point that I'm at. Now as you do this, if you find that it's difficult to um, get little pieces of it up with your finger um, and you need to give it an extra spray of water, that's fine. If for some other reason you find that it's difficult to scrape underneath, then you can use your uh, taping knife and just scrape that area of the wallpaper and then proceed peeling the pieces off. It's a simple technique, but fairly effective. Now, of course, when you're dealing with wallpaper, there's always problems that you can run into. You just don't know what you're going to see underneath. So if you do run into any problems as you're doing it, as you're going along, I am going to be sure to post some um, tips that I have for solving some, some of the common problems that you might run into on the blog. So feel free to visit me over there. And um, I hope that this process will work for you. Happy wallpaper feeling.